I don't know, but... Now, you know what you need, Chantal? You need to get your butt out of the Middle East. You need to go back to Canada, and you need to start living a life that isn't just a big scam. I mean, this is silly. You're going to be 40 years old. You're out here, I mean, following some 29-year-old thinking that he's going to love you and marry you and make a life with you and whatever. Girl, come on. He laughs at you. He makes fun of you. I I mean, why do you think you're over there with him? Because you guys are living it up? I mean, yeah, you really look like you're living it up. You really look like you're happy. What you need to do is you need to go back to Canada. You need to start putting in hard work. And you need to, if a relationship is really what you want, if that's your end game in life, I know it is for some people. If that's really what you want, someone to love you, someone to call you baby, someone to give you affirmations, whatever. I mean, slow steps. I mean, whatever. Get on the dating apps. Work on yourself. Get back to a point where you can walk for more than a minute without getting dizzy. I mean, that would, if I were that in that place, that would be my number one priority. Not who's going to call me baby when I put my head down at night. I mean, girl, come on. I mean, you're not going to be able to heal in this ev- environment, let alone thrive. You're talking about energy. You're sitting here telling us how you're about to fall asleep. So you're getting help and. You want to dunk on Chantel? And that's why I think Shannon and FFG's chemistry is so beautiful because they're so similar. FFG has to be the hero. That's why she has to always dunk on Chantel with something. Like when she did the thing with F- uh, BBJ, I stand on this. She did her big one. She did her big one with that one, especially with the way Chantel was running her mouth talking about FFG's dogs. And all. when I saw her pull that off, I said, Leave it to Chantel to have me applaud FFG. I was pissed. I was like, this was so good. She trolled the fuck out of you. Oh, my God. So just so we're clear, and you heard it here first. What happened with BBJ, rescuing BBJ? The BBJ rescue um, to FFG will be with um, the 89 LBs are to Amber you will always hear about it for years to come. Always. That's never going to die. She did her big one. She had to make it public. And for those saying, oh, it was for the money. I think you guys forget, I've said this before, multiple things can be right at once. She did her big one and definitely helped DBJ because at this point, I think almost anybody's better than Chantel. But yes, of course it was for the money. If it wasn't for the money, she would have. she wouldn't have made it public. Of course it was for the money. Are you kidding? The bitch held a whole, she shopped for BBJ's collar on stream. She shopped for a cat to get a Gucci collar for a cat. Of course it was for money. But I'm not going to take away the fact that like, at least she got BBJ, but yes, it was for money. Yes, it was for content. Are you crazy? That is her 89 LBs, bitch. She is never letting that go. That will always be content in some way. Isms. So, uh, French Fried Girls should be worried because Chantal was threatening to sue again. Uh, shadowed that she might have returned to Canada to handle some other business, and she would handle that while she was there. Um, I would be terrified if I was French Fried Girl. So terrified. This is the woman who couldn't even make a vet appointment, and she's going to coordinate a multi-person lawsuit because she felt duped about her cat being given to somebody else by her to somebody else um but she couldn't tell you who because the selfish bitch wouldn't even walk down the stairs to go say bye she handed it to pete's again many reasons we can't follow through with our commitments so um and chantal doesn't have much tolerance for distress or discomfort if something isn't exactly the way she wants to eat it she's not going to eat it if it's not the right temperature she's not going to eat it um so you would think someone as large as her would be much more picky but, uh, or be much less picky. But actually, some of the more morbidly obese people I know are rather picky about their food. And, like other folks who deal with addiction, uh, can get pretty nasty if they don't get what they want. How many people think that they've probably fought about food a couple times already? I'm sure he was fine with her coming over, but she probably, she farted out a bunch of promises initially that she was going to, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and lose weight and it'll be great and I'll be going to the beach and we'll be travel-beezing. If you're too fat for a plane, you got to do something. 
because now you can't even get out of there in a hurry if you need to. Um, there's no shame in buying two plain seats if you need them, but if you don't like that you need them or that you're cutting it close to needing them, whose job is it to change the shape of Chantal's body? Yours? Mine? A pill? Some Ozempic? No, it comes down to Chantal and what she chooses to do. At this point, she's had more resources and opportunities and access to treatment over the years that most people don't give a shit how she feels or that she probably can't handle all of her ADLs maybe on her own because she was always such a nasty, self-centered person that her discomfort brings people pleasure. We've heard of schadenfreude. You know, it's the same sort of thing. I don't So we saw some boats pass by while we were hanging out by the riverside and decided after we were done hanging out by the river to see if we could find a dock and take a boat ride ourselves. On our way- It was his hard earned money to try to buy her food that would support her health. And then either she ordered it without him or he came to reason of, look, I don't love you so much that $250 isn't worth risking your health to me. So if you really love me, Chantal, really, really love me, you'll go on there, eat yourself half to death, and give me the cash. So, I don't know. So and she wants privacy. Okay. And uh, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? Where's your husband? He's out with the boys. Thailand, from what I understand, has a very, very active sex scene. So, um, I'm sure he'll text you. But at any rate, this week we're going to... But she's sitting there, not a lot of people around, but it was the old eyes darting. Remember the outhouse? Or going for Burger King and then sitting in the parking lot, full face of makeup, looking all over the place to see who's looking and who's watching. She's out proud and doesn't care, but hawks like she's ashamed of what she's engaging in. So when she's sitting there with Sala eating, and there's people, you know, not a lot of people, because they go everywhere when it's closed. She's afraid of people, and they want to be able to film, and they're weird. They're weird. She likes getting attention, but standing out doesn't really... Like, I think she probably feels like people are staring, because they are staring. It's a spectacle. She's four times the size of a normal woman. So I think people are going to stare. That's, that shouldn't be unexpected. Is it rude? Is it cruel? I don't know. Bottom line, it shouldn't be unexpected. And to act shocked would be kind of stupid as well. Please look better after yourself. Take better care of yourself. If not you, for your husband that you told us you loved so much, how much do you love him if you're willing to eat yourself to death? Because it's too difficult to try to get better. Beyond 36 hours. I'm not a 12-stepper, but the bondage of self. She's so obsessed with meeting her own wants and needs that she, to her inadvertently, steps on people and hurts people in that way. There's another side of Chantal that is a complete sociopath and pretty much doesn't care about feelings, doesn't know how to act. That's why we had the, the wedding cake and candles and she erupted like she was going to shit her pants because she doesn't know what happiness feels like so she doesn't demonstrate what it looks like. She doesn't know love. She doesn't know any of those feelings. And so with all this spinning in her head, her marriage on the line, her citizenship being up, she goes on a diet. One, I'm pretty, okay? That has a lot and I don't mean that to be conceited. I'm being very matter of fact. Being pretty gets you a lot of privilege. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can get away with a lot if you're pretty. Number one, I'm pretty. It's because I've been watching this amazing trailer, okay, written by Sam H. Freeman and Nung Chung Ping, and they've done a British short film. They did it in 2021, and it was called Femme. So it became a success and they decided to invest more money and more time into making a longer version of this film 
called Femme. Now, the original version was 2021. It won a British um, Shaw Award um, from the um, British Independent Film Awards. And it became a huge hit. So they made a longer version of it. And I haven't seen the short film. And I'm trying to find the, t- the short film. But um, I've they've released the trailer for the new longer feature length version of Femme that they've done. So the how you why YouTube recommended this to me, I don't know. But they did, and I've been watching this trailer non-stop. So if copyright, if they'll allow me um, to put the trailer in, I will show you this trailer that I am seriously obsessed with. Sorry, guys, I forgot to add trigger warning, um, LGBTQ themes and homophobic violence. <laughs> well, you can turn around if you're a fucking man. You're letting them win. How you want to deal with that? I think you're a nice looking lad. On your front. I'm a nice guy. If you disrespect me, fuck you up. I get that. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. Oh, you know. You're a fucking big man. I best remember not to fuck with you then. So, this film features Nathan Stewart Jarrett from um, Candyman and Misfits and George Mackay. Now, I haven't seen George in anything, but he has been in um, 1917. After research, guys, he's been in 1917, um, When Hands Touch, Wolf, and I Came By. I haven't seen any of those films, but I will watch uh, this George Mackay in Femme, because this film looks awesome, and it's a kind of a genre that hasn't been covered um, in an LGBTQ world, so this film looks amazing, and I will be doing video after video after video of this film, Femme, when it finally comes out in December, so please stay tuned. Huggers, I just need to quickly add that concerning Femme, like Femme is released in Europe on December the 1st, right? It's it's released in some places earlier. So like in Spain and in um, Europe and places like that, it's released in December. Okay, and then... So I'll be watching it in December. For people that are in the States, um, it is Fem is going to be released March the 22nd. I just wanted to put that in there. So there's a good few months. If you're in the States, there's a good few months before Fem is released in your cinemas. First off, guys, I wanted to start by saying if you hear banging and some drilling, like construction is kind of all around the place today, all around the neighbourhood today, so apologies um, if you hear drilling or banging or anything like that, because construction is everywhere, okay, so hi guys and welcome to Tailored Talk, so I'm going to analyse three characters from Femme in three separate videos, okay, so I'm going to do focus on the ones that piqued my interest the most. And that is Oz, Jules and Preston. The first one that I'm going to start with is Oz. He was played by Aaron Heffernan. It's very clear that number one, Oz is the ringleader of Preston's friendship group. And number two... Oz is far more terrifying than Preston in different ways. So let's get into this. The first time we see Oz is in the corner shop. He, along with others, goads Preston into losing it. You can hear them all say, 
and I'm sorry, but my bad boy accent is really bad, you can hear them all say, are you going to let this he, she talk to you like that? They all follow Preston out of the corner shop, laughing, as Preston beats Jules to a pulp, gets out a knife and strips him naked, and Oz is laughing as well, and filming the whole attack and the the stripping of Jules. He's filming this on his phone. The next time we see Oz, he meets Jules for the first time. Now, for context, Preston and Jules are about to sleep together for the first time when they get interrupted. Jules walks past the living room to go home when Oz notices him and calls him back. Oz greets their guest and Preston tells him that they met in prison. Oz makes a joke about Preston bumming and bumming is, is basically banging is having sex with men in prison so he makes a joke about Preston having sex with dudes in prison and Preston instantly shuts that down now I think that Oz is the only person that can make fun of Preston's prison time in front of Preston's face and not get thrown through a window Oz is the, really the only person that recognises Jaws in the lift. Now, Jaws gets in the lift first, hears a bunch of people coming towards the lift, frantically presses the door to close it, but it doesn't work, and the doors open, and all of Preston's uh, friends and roommates come in. Oz is the first person that recognises him and says, Oh, that's Preston's little friend. They go up together and Oz is a little surprised and disgusted that Preston greets them in nothing but a pair of boxer shorts. Oz instantly questions why before telling him to put something on. He's like, what are you doing in your boxer shorts? Go and put something on. He also says to Preston, he also says, Preston is trying to seduce you, Jules. As a reward for winning at Street Fighter, Oz invites Jules out to the club. Where in private, he describes Preston to Jules as a bulldog that has been dropped on his head a few times. Oz talks to Jules about how easy it is to wind Preston up and that he deliberately winds Preston up, sometimes picks a target and lets Preston go psycho deliberately. In other words, Oz thinks that Preston makes a great attack dog. It's very clear throughout the film that Oz is the alpha of Preston's friendship group. He's intimidating without saying anything. Everyone will go to the clubs that Oz wants to go to, or do the activities that he wants to do. Oz is the only person that can take the piss out of Preston and call him out in front of their friends. Oz never has to worry about the physical violence, physical abuse from Preston. I kind of see Oz as being untouchable. Preston knows that he can't cross certain lines with him. I'm also convinced that Oz knows that Preston is LGBTQ+. And it blows my mind that Oz hasn't told their other friends or let the cat out of the bag or that Oz hasn't used Preston's secret to his advantage. I think that Oz knew from the first day he met him. That's how smart Oz is. I think Oz knows that Preston's either gay or bisexual the same way that he knew that Jules hasn't even walked past a prison, never mind been in prison. And now Oz has come to the conclusion that Jules has never been to prison, 
it probably makes us think. If Preston is lying about where they meant where they met, what reason would Preston have to lie? We know that Oz can be sadistic. He laughed and filmed Jules's whole attack. But did Oz also know who Jules really was when they met at the flat? It's something to consider. Aaron Heffernan was brilliant as Oz. If there is a film sequel, I'd love to see a deep dive into Oz. I'd love to see a deep dive into Oz and Preston's friendship, how they met, how they became roommates, what their friendship has been like over the years. Because Oz is a mysterious character with star power and I'd like to see more of him. Also, guys, I'd like to also check out um, Aaron's upcoming projects because he really impressed me in this role. Oz isn't featured much, but Oz is absolutely unforgettable. So kudos to Aaron for this mesmerising performance. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video. Let me know what you thought of Oz. Let me thought what you let me know what you thought of Aaron's performance in the comments. Thank you for watching. Thanks for listening.